everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to go over with you the seven steps that you need to take to retire. I've got them written down right here in front of me, and they are packed with fantastic information. The funny thing is about retirement, it is so simple, but so few follow the process. The implementation is very difficult for some reason because we lack discipline. We're these emotional creatures that just get pulled in all these different directions and we try to rationalize our decisions and we're just not consistent. So this is if this is actual advice that if you really do follow it, you will retire 100%. So I want to share this with you today. So step one, reverse engineer retirement. If you do not begin with the end in mind, if you do not have a destination on where you're going to, you will never end up right there. If you just get in a boat and start rowing with no idea where you're going, you're never going to get there. So you've got to reverse engineer retirement. What does that look like? You need to sit down and create a budget and look at what you need to survive off retirement. What does it look like? What do you want to do every single day? What do you want to wake up and start? Do you want to have like a little side hustle you do? What are you passionate about? You need to get very clear about what your vision is and what it costs to do that vision. So sitting down, there's a ton of great apps. I personally like uh, the Empower app. It used to be personal capital. I have all my credit cards and debit cards linked to it. And so it tells me exactly what I'm spending on each category and what my monthly expenses are. So I know what it takes for me to survive with my family. So I know exactly what number you know my passive income investments need to hit for example if i was trying to uh, retire and stop working forever for me to not have to rely on a on a job or some kind of active uh, participation in something to generate money so that is going to be a big part of it begin with the end in mind create a budget figure out what your monthly expenses are and how much you need for food how much you need for fun how much you need for housing that's step one step two calculate your nest egg that you need to build. This is what you're going to work towards. This is what you're going to work towards every single day. You've got to feel like you're making progress towards something. That something is a nest egg. This, this something, you need to take whatever your living expenses are and you need to divide them by 6%. In other words, if you need $95,000 a year to survive, Divide that by 6%, that gives you $1,583,000, uh, $1, basically $1.6 million. What that tells you that is basically you, you, can, you can expect to most likely receive 6% per year consistently off whatever it is you're investing in. I think treasuries right now are paying like 5.5%. Risk-free investment, that's it's five and a half percent. I mean, that's that's crazy. That that right there basically meets the six percent rule. And so that tells you you need about one point six million dollars. Whereas if you if you invested that in just treasuries alone, and there were six percent, whether it's treasuries or annuities or whatever, that means that you're going to be able to survive off the income that that investment generates. That's the goal. So Step one, calculate your living expenses and create your vision, what it is you want to do and what it costs. Step two, calculate your nest egg. Take whatever your annual expenses are, divide it by 6%. That's your nest egg. That's what you're going after, baby. That's what you need to save to retire. Step three is you need to create a plan. So we've already got our monthly budget. We need to look at where we can trim. I promise you there's something that you can trim. And when you take those trimmings and you look at where you can cut, you need to start consistently investing a portion of every single paycheck. I did another episode on how to invest your money. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check out the best investment advice I ever received. But you need to start consistently investing what that is. You need to get compound interest on your side. So we've all seen the charts where the uh, you know, the X and Y axis goes like just completely vertical. It starts going up and up and up and up more and more and more over time. You want compound interest on your side. Einstein said it was like the eighth, ninth, tenth wonder of the world. Those who understand it make money off of it. Those who don't pay it. He was talking about the use of like credit cards because if you've got credit card debt and you're paying these crazy 20% interest, compound interest is working against you. So don't do that. Get it on your side. 
create a plan and consistently invest. Step four is increase your income. So there's a lot of ways you can get unique here. You need to have your spouse maybe get a job. Maybe you can negotiate a better salary at work. Maybe you could even find a better job out there. If you've been with the same job and you haven't had a huge pay bump increase, you feel like you've hit this, this glass ceiling, time to find a new job. Uh, maybe start a little side hustle as well, something that you've been passionate about, something you can make money. But the goal for step number four is increase your income. Do something to increase the amount of money that you are making. Get creative with it. Step five is lower expenses. Sit down and be honest with what you can afford. A big part of this is getting over your insecurities, right? We all seek social status, and a lot of us go broke trying to look rich. Look at what you can actually lower. When I did this, I, I found out that I was I was spending way too much on restaurants. Let me just say, I, I was spending like $1,700 a month on restaurants. I like food, okay? Food brings people closer together. But if I'm being honest, when I did this exercise a couple years ago, I was like, dude, 500 bucks, 600 bucks a month is fine. You're, you're good. And so I stopped going out to the super fancy, schmancy restaurants all the time and uh, more focused on like just the quality of food and, and the date experience rather than the, the crazy fancy schmancy meal. Uh, another thing was, was my traveling. I have cut back a little bit on my travel. But I got creative with it. I started putting all of our construction expenses on American Exp Express Platinum Card. It gave me like over a million points per year. And I basically was able to use that to go on my little travel expenditures. But I was I was spending like spending like thirty five thousand dollars a year on travel. Too much money. Uh, but I've trimmed that down. I've gotten a lot smarter with my travel, usually points on credit cards to get free hotels, uh, free flights, etc. Uh, you know, I'm going to New Zealand and I literally have a $10,000 trip that's completely paid for with American Express Platinum Points. So get creative with making the things that you still want to happen, but be honest with what you can actually do. So I've, I've, I've probably cut my travel down to maybe $15,000 a year uh, with all the points and stuff, but figure out how to lower your expenses by being honest with what you actually need. Step six, and this is very, very important. I would argue that step six and step seven are the reason people do not succeed in their retirement goals. They have a plan, but they step six, they don't get leverage on the result. Step six requires that you need to get leverage over yourself on the results. The brain starts to work when it knows it's going to be rewarded. So this is why it's very, very important to create your vision. What are you doing every day on retirement that's fun? Paint a clear picture. What are you doing with your spouse? What are you doing with your kids? What are you doing with your grandkids? What are you doing in your dream vacation in Bali at a resort? What are you eating? The more clear you can get on the vision, the more likely it is that your brain, your subconscious will start to believe that this can actually happen and it'll work more effectively to make it happen. So you have to get leverage on the result. Write your vision down. Write down what will it mean if you accomplish your goals. And then step seven, increase that leverage. So step six is kind of about getting leverage using the carrot. Step seven is about getting leverage with the stick. So write out what life looks like if you don't retire. What are you going to be thinking on your deathbed about all the trips with your family you didn't go on? How you worked for your entire life? life, how you missed out on all your grandkids' birthdays for so many years, how you couldn't go on those dream vacations with your spouse. Maybe maybe you're even working a job where you can't work when you're like 67 years old because it's too much manual physical labor. You know, what does that look like? You know, feeling useless, being out of a job. What regrets will you have? Get increase your leverage by writing out all the things you're going to miss out on. Our brain does something very unique. It responds to loss more aggressively than gain. It responds to loss more aggressively than gain. So if you can figure out ways to paint this picture more on what you can lose than what you can gain, I promise you, you'll get more leverage over yourself. And those are the seven steps that you can take to retire today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you on the next one.